Hello everyone, I'm CJ Werleman. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Now let's get into it. History, as they say, is written by the conquerors, which is why the history of Muslims in America has been rubbed clean from American history books. In fact, the history of Islam in the United States has been made a dirty little secret. One that has perpetuated the idea that Muslims are antithetical to perceived notions of what it means to be an American. But when we take a deep dive into the history books, we see that America's Muslim minority can lay claim to being even more American than the white Christian majority. Because evidence suggests African Muslims landed on the American continent a full 200 years before Christopher Columbus. As illustrated by the story of Mansa Abu Bakir, the brother of 14th century Mali Emperor Manza Musa. So did Mansa Abu Bakr II arrive in the Americas? We may never know, but there are many signs that West African Muslims did. Some of the strongest evidence comes from the pen of Columbus himself, who wrote in his journal that Native Americans confirmed black-skinned people had come from the southeast in boats trading in gold-tipped spears. Not only were these spearheads described as guanine by Native Americans, which was the Mandinkan word for gold, the language of the Mali Empire. Were you to ask an ordinary American what year or period did Muslims first arrive in the United States, they'd most likely guess the 1970s, when Iranian migrants fled the Ayatollah, or maybe the 1960s, when Muhammad Ali announced his conversion to Islam. But their guess would only be out by a full 500 years, because Muslims were not only aboard Christopher Columbus' ship when he arrived in the Americas, but they were the captains and navigators of his fleet. When Columbus came to the New World, the navigator of his ship, the Santa Maria, was a Muslim Moor, someone from Muslim Spain. And the captains of both the Nina and the Pinto were Muslim Moors. Muslims started arriving in America in great numbers from the year 1619, but not because of their free will, but because of the European slave trade. In fact, one in five African slaves brought to America were Muslim. But we may never have known this were it not for a man named Omar Said, who lived as a wealthy 37-year-old scholar in Senegal until being captured and sold into slavery in 1807. He would live the remainder of his life as a slave in the American South. His handwritten autobiography, which opens with a verse from the Quran, offers the first intimate eyewitness testimony of the early history of Muslims in America. Born and raised in West Africa, Omar ibn Said was 37 years old when he was kidnapped and taken to America as a slave in the 1800s. Before I came to the Christian country, my religion was the religion of Muhammad. His autobiography, in his native language of Arabic, is believed to be the only one of its kind, the original words of a Muslim American slave. His story challenges the white Christian history of America because slaves did not arrive without culture or religious beliefs but were often deeply religious, with 20% of all slaves being followers of the Islamic faith, therefore making Islam inseparable from the American story. Unbeknown to ordinary Americans, Muslims are directly connected to an astonishing number of iconic American landmarks. Muslims built the White House, and a Muslim woman was the inspiration for the Statue of Liberty. But the French sculptor was unable to sell the idea to Egyptian leaders. So he sailed to America where the Muslim woman transformed into what we know today as the Statue of Liberty, a monument that serves as a symbol of freedom and immigration. Even President Thomas Jefferson believed Muslims were central to the American experiment. And Thomas Jefferson was also hosting dinners at the end of Ramadan for Muslim diplomats in the White House. Wow. Jefferson once said that he knows the American experiment is a success when we can get a Muslim as a president. The names of American towns and cities also draw their inspiration from Muslims. And we get town names like Allah, Arizona, and Muhammad, Illinois, named after the Prophet Muhammad. These towns were not predominantly Muslim. They got these names as a sign of respect Americans had for Muslim cultures, Muslim civilization, Muslim people. And for a long time, the most famous human being on the planet was Muhammad Ali, an American Muslim. Why do you insist on being called Muhammad Ali now? That's the name given to me by my leading teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's my right. Right. original name. That's a black man named Cassius Clay was my slave name. I'm no longer a slave. What does it mean? Muhammad means worthy of all praises and Ali means most high. Right. Do you intend to fight under that name? Yes, sir. I want to be called by that name. I write autographs of that name. I want to be known all over the world as that name. 
Polling shows that 92% of American Muslims are proud to be American, while other surveys show Muslims are more likely than non-Muslims to display patriotic symbols on their cars and homes. So rather than being antithetical to America or Americanness, Muslims are quintessential to the United States. Their history is damning to those who weaponize Islamophobia and otherize Muslims for political gain. According to Pew Research, among others, there is a great hatred toward Americans by large segments of the Muslim population. How can Islam hate Americans when they played a central role in building America, and even before the United States was an actual country? Clearly, Islam is no less American than Christianity, baseball and apple pie. The history books prove this, and this is the history that must be told. We counter Islamophobia in the West by challenging dominant nativist narratives, or rather the self-evident lies white Christians tell about America. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash cjwellman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow the show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.